Does one have to travel 7,000 miles to find peace and love again in your heart? Man, that's what happened. <laughs> that's what were what you thinking of? You know, when you were packing for, for a country called China, uh, I knew which you, you knew very you know, little about. I, it took me a month. It took me a month. I mean, it was brought to me about going, playing China. It took me actually a month to leave. I had no idea about China. Only thing I knew was Yao Ming, <laughs> the Great Wall, and there was a lot of people. So were you gambling on this decision? No, I wasn't gambling because it was, you know, it was spoken about and it was talked about what the, what the possibilities were. And actually, all of what's happening right now, these are the things that were, were talked about uh, as far as what could happen. But how did you convince your friends and families who persuaded you not going. I mean, my brother, they, they didn't. No, no one can see the. No one can see the vision of what I saw when I first came here. It was a leap of faith. Totally, it was a leap of faith when I first came. When I said I was going back, that's when everybody was like, "Hold up, <laughs> you're going back to China." I was mm. like, "Yeah, I'm going back to China." When I first, when I first got to China, the first two weeks, I wanted to kill myself. I was going crazy. Why? The culture, the food, I mean, it was just a variety of things that I wasn't used to. I was like, oh but describe my God. To, describe to me. I mean, I, I was, need more details. I was seeing, I never seen a big fish come out on the table. I'm like, did they really just bring a big fish and put a fish right there? And, everybody and the fish was the still fish. blinking. The chicken head, the whole chicken, the whole, I'm like, I've never seen that before. Now it's, it's normal, I just, you know, it's just life. It's just normal for me to just, and I'm asking for certain things. I mean, I, I was living in Shanxi, so they told me that that was probably the hardest place to live. Yeah. But the people were so amazing. I mean, when I first got there, they showed me so much love. I just, I was like, man, this love is just incredible. I mean, Hundreds of them were, were at the airport to amazing. receive you. It was just like they just lifted me up and got me right back onto my life and on my way. It was some, it was the story is so crazy because when I got off, when I was on the plane, I was depressed the whole time I was coming here. I was just like, <laughs> I'm flying on the plane. I'm like, oh my God, this flight is so long. And I'm like, where am I going? What am I doing? But. I knew I was going to do something. Once I made the decision to come, mm -hmm. that's when I knew that I was on my way. But I had no idea that it would turn out the way how it was turning out. I had no idea the love of the people. I had mm -hmm. no idea of the culture. I knew I had no idea of the 5,000 lineage that you guys share. I had no idea that the food, there's so many foods that are so <laughs> delicious, so good. I had no idea that Chinese people could drink as much as they drink. I never knew oh, that. Bite you. Oh my God. Oh, the liquor. I had no idea about all of these different things. And as I continue to grow in the culture, I'm like, man, this is real life right here. <laughs> I'm like, this is totally different from what I've been seeing. 2010, in June, he came to China. He first joined the Shanxi team, the Fu Shan team. 二零一一年八月，面对着七冠王的广东队和年轻的北京队，马布里最终选择来到北京，因为对他来说，重要的不只是成为冠军，还有打败冠军。Why? Why was it important for you? So it's not I mean, about won, being the champion; won, it's about beating the champion. Oh, definitely. It's always about. I mean, <laughs> now we're the we're the team that people want to be. That's right. It's fun right. being that team. It's uh -huh. fun because you you have to you have to work, you have to make sure you come ready. Every game is gonna be a fight. Every uh -huh. game is gonna be a challenge. Whenever yeah. teams are gonna always gear up and get ready for us. Yeah. But bite back then. Back no, I mean when I went there, Beijing was the team that I wanted to play for. I was going to see what my options were and what my situation mm -hmm. could turn out to be. When I came in, I told people that we were going to win the championship. Everybody said that I was crazy. Everybody was like, you're nuts. Uh -huh. You know who you got to play? I was like, yeah, I know who I got to play. I went to the finals to watch Guangdong play. I wanted to see what the CBA finals were, were about, and I wanted to see how they played. Mm. And when I watched, I studied them. You can't build an empire mm. like, in, in a day. Of course. It takes time. 
It takes planning, it takes building, it takes preparation. Being here and being a part of part of that, it, it reminds me and it takes me back home. Mm. And it allows me to have that same feeling, which is comfortable, which is like, man, the city. So happy to be home. Like when we be on, when we'll be on the road and like, man, I can't wait to get back home. I was talking to my daughter mm. and I was like, yeah, I'm about to go back home. She was like, what you mean you're about to go back home? <laughs> That's your apartment. Your home is here. <laughs> I was, I started laughing. I was like, oh, okay, yeah. I'm about to go back to the apartment. But she is actually speaking Chinese, right? She's learning to speak uh, the language. This is my younger daughter. Uh -huh. my, older, my older daughter, she's, she, she speaks Chinese now. She, now she's singing in Chinese. Uh -huh. But you have to learn those words to exchange with your teammates uh, at the game, right? I mean, what are some of the words that, that you would use more frequently than others? To be honest, we, we just, they just, they understand me and I understand them. It's not really any specific words mm -hmm. because we have a translator. So the trans, <laughs> that's so important. I uh -huh. mean, our translator, he's the best. Uh -huh. I mean, forget about just the translator. Just, he's an unbelievable human being. Uh -huh. Um, having a really good translator is so vital in the CBA, be, you know, for your foreign players, because the, the, the dialogue that's being exchanged, basketball-wise, is easy. But when I'm trying to get them to understand something, you know, they really have to, like, think about what I'm saying and then go do it. You know, like, don't do this. Because if you do this, then this is going to happen. And they're like, OK, because it's going through somebody. It's uh -huh. not me telling them. It's going through him to him going, to, going to the players. Mm. So once we built that connection, I could just talk. And they, on the court, I could just talk in English. And they'd be like, OK, OK, OK. Because <laughs> it's normally the same thing. When you're playing basketball, mm. it really, nothing really changes that much drastically. Mm. You know, it's normally... Sometimes it's just one look, I guess. Yeah, it's like you could sometimes, like, don't do that. Okay, uh, okay. Your teammates certainly cherish what you have contributed to the team, mm -hmm. your inspiration, your leadership. And you even, you worked like the uh, second coach for, for all the team. Mm -hmm. uh, but then, what have they taught you? You know, what have they brought yeah. to your life? They've, they've taught me the oneness of being together, a brotherhood. Mm. Um, those are my brothers. Those are my brothers. We're together. We've been together for six months. I'm with them more than I'm with my family. Yeah. Um, they're with each other more than they're with their family. Mm. 和在中国的篮球赛场上的其他外援相比，马布里似乎更快地融入了这里的文化和生活方式。在训练场和赛场上，他不缺席训练。传授经验给年轻队员，成为队员眼中的第二教练。和之前很多被看作只为短期赚快钱的外援球员比起来，马布里成为人们眼中的最本土化的模范外援，因为他曾表示要执教中国男篮和愿意定居中国，故被球迷亲切地称为“马政委”。But Beijing obviously is another metropolitan city that is more similar to the life of New York. What's the best part of the city that you love? The energy. I mean, it's just, it's a, it's a square box. The energy. The energy is, is, is amazing. The people are amazing. Yeah. Having this opportunity and to share it with people who are just in amazement of something that just happened. Yeah in their city, the tears, mm. the tears from the people in the stands. When I watched the video, I just start crying. I'm like, <laughs> oh my God, I can't believe this. <laughs> like, they really, I mean, just crying, pouring out tears. Yeah. People trying to hold back their tears, mm. like in amazement, covering their face, covering their face. Yeah. Seeing that, I'm like, this is just amazing. It's so beautiful. Like to witness it, to witness people feeling a certain way about something that we did as a group. We did something for the city. We made the city proud. We made the city happy. We made them feel like you, get, you, you, you made us one. So it's not just about victory. It's not even just about approving yourself that you could do it. 
But it's also a sense of sharing with oh, so many people, these yeah. connections with people, right? Of course. I mean, being able to share the connection and, and the love of the passion of what we put forth to do something for the fans is it's incredible.